Within Alice in Borderlands Season 2, we saw most of the main group tackle a wide variety of difficult games where everything was quite literally at stake. However, the final game was one that was played by Arisu with an injured Usagi watching on from the sidelines. It was definitely the most controversial game in the second season, because many people felt like it was too easy and underwhelming for the finale, whilst others saw the difficulty that the show was trying to convey. So with that, I thought I'd break down and explain the final game in Alice in Borderland and discuss just how difficult it was. So let's get into it. Here is Alice in Borderland Season 2 Queen of Hearts Game Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. As we embarked onto the final game in the series, we saw that it was one that was titled Croquet. Mira, who was the Queen of Hearts, was the person who stated the rules and was essentially the game's master. The rules for the game were quite simple. All you had to do was complete the game of croquet in front of you. As long as the player didn't quit before the game finished naturally, then the player would win the game, even if the game of croquet was lost by the individual. Following the rules being stated, this was then when we saw the deeper layers to the game. The realization that the game wasn't about the sport of croquet at all, but something much more. It was in fact about the mental manipulation and mind games that Mira would put upon the player throughout the game in order to get them to quit before it was complete. We saw this start when they played a round of croquet and then Mira sat them down mid-game and brought out some tea for them to consume. It was here where the mind games then began. The burning question that Arisu had throughout the entirety of the show was why were they all there in Borderland and how do they return to the real world? And this was the key thing that Mira used in order to try and get them to quit the game. We saw her manipulate the surroundings on the court in making it appear as though there were cameras there, tying into a theory that was essentially focused on making them believe that humans had essentially become immortal 500 years after the year that Arisu and Yusagi believed was the current year. She made them believe that they were playing the game in a virtual reality package, but because they were so immersed within it, they forgot that they started it. Mira stated that due to people becoming immortal, they stopped fearing death, so they decided to be a part of the game. However, that wasn't the case and was just one way of luring them both into a false sense of security. We then saw Mira go on to state some other theories about how the reality that they were in was all lies and not real. But this was done so that she could get Arisu to take her out and harm her. As in that way, if he killed her, it would end the game in a non-natural fashion and cause himself and Yusagi to be eliminated. The final move that Mira had was to try and make Arisu believe that this was all taking place in his mind, and that in reality, he was mentally ill and incapable of knowing what was an illusion and what was real. Mira painted herself out to be his doctor and that they were in therapy together. This was her final play and her big move that we saw was the most effective out of all of the lies that she told as Arisu did genuinely believe this one, and we actually got to see inside of his mind. Within his mind, she tapped into his personal memories, and we saw him in an extremely damaged state, as if he was on the verge of giving up, so it was definitely the most effective move that she played. Her main goal was to make him take what was in front of him, which would have meant that he would have died inside of the game, which would then be another way of him quitting, and would ultimately mean that Arisu and Yusagi would have died within Croquet, within Borderland, and then also in reality. As we saw in the finale, Borderland was essentially a fight for survival to make it back to reality, and it represented their body fighting off the damage that was caused due to the meteorite that hit Tokyo. So if in this instance, Arisu had have taken what was in front of him, then he would have also died in real life and never made it back to the real world. As Arisu didn't give in to what Mira was saying and was able to fight the urge, we saw that he didn't end up quitting the game, and with Mira's turns to try and make him quit all up and done, this then meant that they went back to the original game of Croquet, where they completed the final round. And even though Arisu didn't win the game of Croquet, Mira ended up being killed as she was defeated as he never quit, despite all of her efforts. And with Arisu winning, this then meant that he got the question of whether or not to return to reality, which obviously we saw him take. This was a really interesting, thought-provoking game that stood out when compared to many of the others. It went deep inside of the player's mind, something like no other game did that we saw in the show, and it was extremely personal. It was a game that brought personal matters up and tried to use them against the player. In the grand scheme of things, physically, it wasn't that difficult of a game, but mentally, I feel it was probably the most difficult one that there was, 
as it was a constant mental battle in trying to believe what was real, what was fake, and what you as a player needed to do to win. It was a game that I very much enjoyed and I thought was a good game for the show to conclude on. So, there you have it, Alice in Borderlands Season 2 Queen of Hearts Game Explained. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of the final game? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.